Some people think those NVIDIA investors got lucky, like there's no way you can consistently make lots of money like that in investing. But then I started working with wealthy people and realized they weren't just lucky. Heads up, I might own some of the stocks that we're talking about. But remember, this is all about learning and exploring ideas. I'm not telling you what to buy. If you had invested 10 grand into NVIDIA a decade ago, you would have had roughly $2.8 million today, right? As of the end of July. I, I like to think of the market. I call her in my mind, lady market. It makes it very easy for me to conceptualize things and uh, have a relationship that's healthy with the market. So I call her lady market, right? And lady market has desires. And when those desires are met, there's opportunities for big profits. And so when I'm looking at a specific investment, I'm thinking in the context of what is Lady Market's desire? In the case of NVIDIA and the problem that NVIDIA solved, Lady Market wanted her computers to be way smarter, like think for themselves smart, right? And NVIDIA gave her that brain power with her super chips and she rewarded those investors big time. So what was the dominant niche, right? We talked about time machines needing a, a dominant niche to make a lot of money, right? NVIDIA started out sort of like an artist of the computer world. They made games look amazing and cool, and they were just the master of having the best graphics. So you got those two components. You got NVIDIA solving a big problem for Lady Market, right? Fulfilling her desire. And then you had them mastering a niche along that desire curve. And so then as an investor, I go, okay, like they have a value proposition. Now, next thing I look at is like, what's the upside? And so, you know, you look at the asking price for NVIDIA 10 years ago. And that asking price uh, 10 years ago was roughly about $10 billion. And, and so as an investor, you would look and you would say, 10 billion, you know, my rule for time machines is can it go up a hundred times from here? So 10 billion, can it go to 10 times would be a hundred billion. And then next step up is 10 times from that a trillion. So can NVIDIA go from 10 billion to a trillion, right? Now it's easy with hindsight to look at the price today, which is roughly worth about 3 trillion total value of the company, right? But 10 years ago, we didn't have hindsight. So you would have, you would have had to done your research and dug deep and spent the 30 minutes a day for a year. That's what I talk about to build mastery or build understanding of a specific industry or niche, but you would have had to done the work to figure out uh, if it could have gone to, grown to a trillion. But when you do the work, that becomes very clear. That's the importance of doing homework. And so um, it's worth three trillion a day. So obviously if you've done your homework, you would have been right. Um, but we're going to, pivot to a, another current example of a company and look at how you can look at a company today and then project out what it's likely to grow to in the future. Now we're going to look at a, another potential time machine. Uh, as I mentioned, it's not, not a recommendation, but we're looking at Marathon Digital and this is a stock that I currently own, just heads up. Uh, so what is Lady Market's desire? right? She want, she wants a super secure online piggy bank that no one can break into or cheat. And Bitcoin miners like Marathon are the guards that keep, that keep that piggy bank safe, right? It makes sure your digital money is always there when you need it. Where did the desire come from? Well, central banks around the world are creating more money, uh, <laughs> seeming like an infinite level uh, to pay for the government's irresponsible spending. And when they do that, it makes the value of the money their citizens use go down in value. And so Lady Market's like, I need to have a place where my money is protected. I like, I like to think about Marathon Digital as sort of like a pro gamer with the fastest computer and the best skills. And they're the ones that can rack up the Bitcoin treasures faster than anyone else, right? So you got the Bitcoin ecosystem, which is the, which is the protected money. You got, you got these Bitcoin miners, which are the guards. And then you have Marathon Digital, which is like 
the strongest and the best guard to protect money. And it's also, in the course of us doing business, racking up the most Bitcoin in the process of doing its work. Right? So now we're going to look at the current market price today, right? We need to know, all right, what is the upside potential? Can this company go up 100 times from where it is right now, right? As of when I wrote this, which is August 18th, 2024, Marathon's total company value was around $5 billion. And so my question that I go in my head is, can this grow from $5 billion to $500 billion, right? Is that, is that possible? So these are some of the things that I'm thinking through. I'm narrowing it down into a sound bite, but I've done the hours and hours of work that it takes to understand this for myself. Um, so you want to do the, do your work, but imagine Bitcoin becomes just like digital gold, which gold has been the reserve currency for trustless money for thousands of years. And so imagine Bitcoin becomes like digital gold used by everyone and everywhere. Uh, and Marathon becomes the top Bitcoin miner, which could be sitting on a treasure chest uh, worth hundreds of billions of dollars of value, right? So separate from it just being a guard and getting paid for that in its war chest, it also is sitting on top of hundreds of billions of dollars of Bitcoin. So $500 billion for me in a decade is super reasonable. We're going to get into confidence booster. Each episode that I do, I'm going to talk about confidence boosters because investing, sticking with a good investment is all about having good confidence. And this is why doing your homework is important, right? If if you were choosing a mate, you wouldn't just pick a mate because your friend said they were cool, right? Or some podcaster said, hey, you know, this person is amazing you should definitely date her. No, you would spend time getting another person before you made a major commitment. Um, and that's like doing your own research because if you just took my thoughts, you're not going to stay committed to it because you don't have the relationship with the company that I have, right? Emotionally. Now we're going to talk about like the importance of emotional temperament in investing. I was I was chatting with a young 20-year-old, 21-year-old trader, right? He was just getting started in in investing money. He wanted some advice uh, from an experienced uh, investor. And so I talked to him about saying, hey, there's lots of different things you can look at from an investment standpoint, and it can become sort of overwhelming, right? Because you might watch this channel, you might buy this course, or you might read this thing, and they may say, these are the metrics that you need to use to make your investment decisions, right? Everybody has their own way. And the part that's even tougher to vet is each person that tells you to do it their way has actually made verifiable money, right? Some of them are lying, but let's just assume that, you know, you talk, there's a lot of verified people that I've seen that have made money doing different ways. So it becomes overwhelming at which strategy is right for you. And so what I was telling them was, hey, there's a lot of strategies that work. And I don't, I don't really think one strategy is better than another. You got to find the one that's right for you. And I know that, and I told them, I know that may sound cliche because everybody says that, but that is true. You know, Warren Buffett's made billions value investing. And on the, on the opposite end, you've had Stanley Druckenmiller make billions trading. So you can make a lot of money multiple different ways. Pick one that's right for you. But that's only like maybe like 5% of what makes you a good investor. What makes you a good investor is your emotional temperament, right? How can you stick with your strategy through the ups and downs of the market? And so and he resonated with that, right? And I said, hey, I would, I would recommend that you meditate. And he was like, meditate? And I was like, I said, because meditate is a emotional balancer, right? It, it allows you to find a feeling of peace, right? When you, get, when you go quiet in your mind, it's sort of like a chill out button for your brain, right? You just sit quietly, you focus on your breath, you let your thoughts float away like clouds, and it helps you stay calm and focused even when things get crazy, right? So you're practicing it, you're practicing it. So then when you're investing and the market's moving over time, right? It's like a muscle, right? Because you can't just start bench pressing 300 pounds, you know, in a week. You got to work up to it. But same thing with money, right? Money's very emotional. And you get to a point to where you can have the ups and downs, do what they do. And you be unbothered because you're confident and calm in your spirit. And you can ride it out. And that's like every great investor 
has ice cold blood when it comes to investing. And that's the most important skill to learn. So each each episode, I'm also going to give you different things to test out to do daily to help you increase your emotional temperament. The next topic we're going to talk about in the next episode is Shopify, right? How investors turn $10,000 to $200,000 in a decade uh, from the IPO, which is about May, tw- May 2015 to July 2024. Share your thoughts on other potential time machines in the comments. Like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more insights. Share the episode if you thought it was helpful to friends that are interested in investing. Um, and so thanks for hanging out. Be fruitful and go multiply your money. Philip Washington Jr. is a registered investment advisor. Information presented is for educational purposes only and does not intend to make an offer or solicitation for the sale or purchase of any specific securities, investments, or investment strategies. Investments involve risk and, unless otherwise stated, are not guaranteed. Be sure to first consult with a qualified financial advisor and or tax professional before implementing any strategy discussed herein. Past performance is not indicative of future performance.